o'clock here on a Monday morning. Welcome to Up With Creme. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Thanks so much for joining us on this Monday and for starting your work week off with us. We're having a good Monday so we far. We are. Maybe some are a little sore this morning, though. For sure. <laughs> you know, if people are still recovering from Hoop Fest. You know, get up and stretch this morning. Stretching uh, yes. is key uh, for sure. Yeah, really. If you played or even just watched, it was Absolutely. Like, it's a lot of walking. It too. is a lot of walking. <laughs> Meteorologist Thomas Patrick, though, had our forecast for us. And you know what? He told us that the weather was going to be nice. Warm, but not too hot. No melted shoes. Yep. Nothing like that over the weekend. <laughs> but what does this week have in store for us, yeah, Thomas? Probably more of the same. And then it starts to heat up. Thankfully, Hoop Fest wasn't next weekend because that is starting to look very hot. I also love that our Creme 2 team divides and conquers between Hoop Fest and Bloomsday because I did Bloomsday and Brandon T. Jones did Hoop Fest. And yeah, a lot of fun from this past weekend. And weather-wise, about the similar for today. Already very mild first thing this morning at 61 degrees. Plenty of sunshine out there. And we're seeing lots of areas in the 50s and 60s this morning. In fact, Spokane at 61 is one of our warm spots across the inland northwest so far. Now, the last couple days, we did see a couple showers and storms mainly over the mountains. But this time around, I think the chance is a little bit higher, especially closer to Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. There is a chance anywhere, especially through the Columbia. A basin. So that's why we'll keep a, a bit of a sharper eye on Doppler radar for this afternoon compared to this weekend. At 602, new from overnight. Last night, several people came together in Spokane Valley to remember the Gorge shooting victims. Now, it's been more than a week since the shooting at the campground next to the Gorge Amphitheater killed two people and injured three others, including the suspect. Close to two dozen people gathered at Mirabeau Point Park, holding small candles and making bracelets with the names of the victims. Vigil co-organizer Shelby Major says that she was at the Gorge inside the festival when the shooting happened. Being together and I know like being with other people and being able to share your experiences helps people heal and not everybody has that safe space at home or like the family and friends to be able to process through it. So I thought it was good to provide that space. According to the Facebook page Wonderland moderators, there were also vigils held last night in Tacoma and in Portland. The suspect James Kelly appeared in court last week in Grant County. He now faces two counts of first degree murder, two counts of first degree assault and one count of first degree assault domestic violence. Now, in the meantime, tomorrow, Brian Koberger, the man charged with killing four University of Idaho students, is expected to be back in court. There will be a hearing to talk about pausing the proceedings against him so he can contest the grand jury indictment. Koberger is asking for the full documents from the grand jury that indicted him and time to review these documents to contest his indictment. The state argues he is only entitled to an audio recording of transcript of the grand jury proceedings. The release of the grand jury records will be discussed tomorrow at 1.30 in the afternoon in the Latah County Courthouse. Creme 2 will be there in the courtroom. Now, last Thursday, Koberger's defense filed an objection with the court. They claim because the state hasn't given details about the genetic genealogy testing done, it is hiding its case. Now, we previously reported court documents from the Latah County Prosecutor's Office show that DNA from a swab of Koberger's cheek is a statistical match to DNA on the knife sheath left behind at the crime scene. Koberger's defense team now wants information on the methods used to make that match. The defense also says there was no explanation for the lack of DNA evidence from the victims in Koberger's Burger's apartment, office, home, or car. The trial is set to begin on October 2nd. It is 6.04 now. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. This morning, Spokane City Administrator won't be showing up to City Hall. Johnny Perkins was placed on leave last week. The city spokesperson confirmed with CREM2 several city employees came forward with concerns about Perkins but did not say much else. Our team is working to find out what those complaints are. Perkins has served as city administrator since March of 2021. This morning, a man is waking up in the Spokane County Jail for threatening to kill his neighbor, then throwing a baseball-sized rock at her. Spokane County deputies responded, and after an hours-long standoff in Spokane Valley, 66-year-old James Miller surrendered to police and was arrested. This morning, Miller faces assault and felony harassment charges. Right now, a Fairchild Airman was sentenced to six months in prison for stealing ammunition from the Air Force Base. Police say Eric Eagleton was arrested for conspiring to steal military ammunition from Fairchild and falsifying documents to make it look like the ammunition was used for official military use. So documents show more than 14,000 rounds were stolen. 
And this morning, Spokane police continue to investigate a drive-by shooting in the Logan neighborhood. It happened early on Saturday morning near Dakota and Carlisle Avenue, which is just west of Logan Elementary School. Spokane police say no one was hurt. While police searched for the suspects, they responded to a car crash about three miles north of Crestline and Francis. The suspects were detained at the scene of that crash. Right now, our team is reaching out to police to see if and how these situations are connected. That is a look at your morning rush. It's 606 and weather wise going to be a nice summer day today like it was this weekend. Our temperatures will climb easily into the mid 80s or thereabouts, though our thunderstorm chances starting to get just a little bit higher. If it were like 5 to 10% say over the weekend, today it's closer to that 10 to 20% range. So I am going to include it uh, with the icons on the forecast after about 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon. It's not going to be widespread. Not everybody's going to get rain, but it is a possibility for this afternoon. Mid 80s again for high temperatures today, but it gets even hotter come next week. That will be the 4th of July week and the entire West Coast is starting to trend way up temperature wise, which will easily result in 90s for our region. Well, what a weekend as we say goodbye to another great Hoop Fest weekend in Spokane. This year's tournament included some of Krem 2's very own athletes. I'm going to call them athletes. They are athletes. Yes. They played great. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyone who competed in Hoop Fest, you're an athlete. Yes. Listen, come on. So up with Krem's Brandon T. Jones is joining us live from downtown Spokane this morning. So Brandon, first of all, how are you feeling this morning? And then how did things go for Krem of the Crop? Were you limping earlier? I know. <laughs> I, you know, I may have been limping a little bit. I'm feeling real sore back in the glutes and hamstring areas, but uh, we had we had a really great time. We didn't play great. We definitely didn't play great, but uh, we're hoping next year we can come back a little bit stronger. But go ahead and take a look at some of these highlights from our very first game back on Saturday. I'm a little worried about this. Why did you tell me we should have brought a ball, bro? <laughs> I thought you would. You always have a ball. Yeah, I left it in the garage though, cause I'm like, oh, they're gonna have a bunch of balls out here, man. I'm like, I thought they were gonna be provided by Hoop Fest or something, and we can just shoot around. Oh, you gotta pay for those. Yeah, no, nah, damn. Oh, you know, look at my sock game right now. I'm gonna be cold as a rock, bro, but I'm about to come out here shooting like it ain't nothing. Let me shoot here, I'll miss. <laughs> You guys can't, you can't spank us too bad, man. You gotta, yeah, let, let it make it close for us at least, man. How tall are you? Seven. Seven? Six, seven. Six, seven? I don't like any, this defense is too locked down. <laughs> there you go, Quinny. Hey! Is it maybe great? They got us hard on yeah. that one. Not going our way, Brandon. We need big man Andrew back out there. Ah, boy. We're just relying on this man. I'm at the point of gas. I have no legs. Oh, what a pass. That was sexy. I've got one rain anchor in me. Yeah, you do. Hi. Ah. Oh. That was a $100 move, 10 cent finish. This is a mismatch. Mismatch! Ah! I actually thought it did to yourself. I was like, oh yeah, that is a mismatch. Maybe I shouldn't yell that so you guys don't know. Travis! That was an easy size! Shoot that! Woo! Bring this bucket. Wow. Good Rock. shot. Take him, Brandon. Take him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Pick up, pick up, pick up. Stay up. Get him off. Wow, that's drippy. Dang. Good shot. Dang. Good game, buddy. Good shot. Yes, sir. Good game, buddy. Hey, nice You got that backboard down, dog. Backyard basketball. Good playing with you guys. I think the biggest takeaway from this past weekend was that we're coming back next year and we're all planning to be in better shape and practicing a lot more with each other before we actually go out there and just start shooting around. You know, that's uh, that's the major thing we want to make sure we do is actually get together, pass the ball around, shoot the buckets and uh, 
ultimately just continue to have a great time. Hoop Fest was awesome and uh, we're really looking forward to, you know, bringing Crim of the Crop back together for our next go round and winning some games next year. Tim Channing, I'll go ahead and toss it back to you. That's the attitude. Exactly. And you know, we gotta say, Channy and I, we watch yeah. from the sidelines. We were hanging out with your son, Brandon. Your little boy is so sweet. He's, He's gonna be a future baller, <laughs> that's for sure. He had some cool Nike slides on. But uh, Brandon, I did wanna bring up yeah. though, you did tweet out something, you know, this is your first hoop fest and you said everyone should try this. What did you mean by that? Yeah. Oh, you know, I was just telling Al, our, our, one of our photographers, that I really just did, you know, I, I loved everything about it. Everybody was just walking through the streets, having a great time competing, and ultimately, you know, you guys know I love basketball, so this was one of the best events I've ever seen, and I think, honestly, it's probably one of the best events throughout the entire country, if not the world. Like, I think everybody should come out here and experience a hoop fest. People from all over were traveling here just to be here, and especially for the, the local sports. Spokane natives who've grown up with this and seeing how much it's evolved and seeing it year by year and then becoming adults and still coming back and playing no matter where they live. It was an overall amazing experience. I loved everything about it. Absolutely, Brandon. Could mm. not agree more. It's one of the best events so ever. Fun. Thanks so much, Brandon. We'll check back in with you here in a little bit just later in the show.